Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can move parts around in the game just by selecting them and then clicking where you want them to go to. In addition to moving parts, I'm also going to show you how to rotate them by clicking a key on the keyboard. So you can do something like this here. You can put parts on other parts just by clicking where you want them to go. There's a lot you can do with this, so let's go ahead and dive in and get started. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started by going over the setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to be making a folder inside of Workspace. Go ahead and rename that folder to Movable. Inside this folder is where we're going to store all the parts that we want to be able to move by clicking and then clicking a new position. We're also going to be adding a script inside this folder here. Inside a replicated storage, we're going to be adding two remote events. One of them is going to be called move event. The other is going to be called rotate event. To add these remote events, just click on the plus sign, click on remote event, and then rename it. We're going to be adding a screen GUI and a text label inside of starter GUI. The reason I'm doing this is so that we can put a limit on how far we can move these parts. And if it's outside of the range, we can display this message for the player. Okay, and the final script that we're going to be adding is a local script inside of starter player scripts. And we're going to be starting with this local script, so after you add it, go ahead and open it up. The first thing we're going to do inside the script is make a variable for the folder that should be inside the workspace. So that's the folder that we're going to put all the parts inside. So let's go and say local folder, and that's going to be equal to game dot workspace. And then we're going to say colon wait for child. Inside here is going to be the name of the folder, so that's movable. After that, we're going to make a variable for the player. We'll say local player, and that's going to be equal to game dot players, and then we're going to say dot local player. After that, we're going to make a variable for user input service so we can detect when the mouse gets clicked. So we'll say local UIS for user input service is going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put user input service. After that, we're going to say local rs so this is going to be for the replicated storage that's going to be equal to game colon get service and this time we're going to say replicated storage underneath the replicated storage variable we're going to make two more one for our move event and one for our rotate event so those are referencing the two remote events that we should add to the replicated storage so we should have a move event and a rotate event so let's start with the move event we'll say local move event and that's going to be equal to replicated storage rs colon wait for child. Inside here, we're going to put the name of the remote event. So that's going to be move event. Next will be the rotate event. So we'll say local rotate event. That's going to be equal to rs colon wait for child. This time we're going to say rotate event. And the final variable for now is going to hold the selected piece. So let's say local and selected. And for now, we're not going to set this equal to anything. Once the player selects a part, that's when we'll assign a value for it. The next thing we're going to do is use a for loop to look for clicks on all the parts inside of our movable folder. To do that, we can say for underscore comma, and I'm going to say part in pairs. Inside here, I'm going to say folder colon get children. Outside both parentheses, I'm going to write do and then press enter. I only want to look for clicks on parts and not the script. So the first thing I'm going to do is say if part colon is a inside the parentheses I'm going to put base part then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say part dot click detector and we haven't actually added the click detector yet we're going to be doing that with a script right up here so for now we're just going to pretend like it exists and then later on we're actually going to add it in the script up here so part dot click detector and then we're going to say dot mouse click colon connect Inside the parentheses, we're going to put function. With the cursor in between the last two parentheses, you can press enter, and you should get the end automatically. So once the player clicks on the part, we're going to say selected is equal to part. And then we're going to set the part's transparency to 0 0.5 by saying part.transparency is equal to 0 0.5. So that's going to make it a little bit transparent so that we can tell it's selected. For the next part, we're going to be using the user input service to detect when the mouse was clicked. So let's go ahead and say UIS dot input began. We're going to say colon connect. 
and then we're going to put parentheses function. Inside the parentheses next to function, we're going to put input. So that's going to store the type of input that gets detected. The first thing we're going to check for is to make sure we have a selected piece. So we're going to say if selected, then once we have a selected piece, we then want to check for a mouse click. So we're going to say if input dot user input type. And we're going to check to see if that's equal to enum dot user input type dot mouse button one. And if we have a mouse button one, which is a left click, then we're going to check the distance. We're going to check the distance by saying if and then parentheses. We're going to take a look at the selected part. So we'll say selected dot position. And then we're going to subtract that from the mouse's position. Before we do that, we have to get the mouse's position. So up at the top here, right below the player variable, let's go ahead and say local mouse. It's going to be equal to player colon get mouse. Now back here at the bottom, we're going to take the selected parts position and subtract that from the mouse's position. So we're going to say mouse dot hit dot P. Okay, we're going to subtract those two positions and then take the magnitude of it. So we're going to say dot magnitude. So that's going to give us a distance between those two points. And then we're going to say less than some number. And that number is going to be the distance that the part can travel. So let's go and start this off at 50. So if the distance from the selected part to the mouse's position is less than 50, then what I'm going to do is trigger the remote event. So let's say move event colon fire server. Inside the parentheses, I'm going to pass the selected part. And I'm also going to pass the mouse's position. So I'm going to say mouse dot hit dot P. Once I move the part, I want to set the transparency back to zero. So I'm going to say selected dot transparency. And I'm going to set that back equal to zero. And then I'm going to clear out the selected variable by saying selected is equal to nil. Now we're going to make an else statement for this if. So if the part's distance is greater than 50, then what we want to do is display that text GUI that we have on the screen. So we want to display this right here. To do that, we can say player dot player GUI. It's located in a screen GUI. If you have multiple screen GUIs in the game, you may want to rename this. So just rename your screen GUI to something else and just make sure you update it here too. So inside my screen GUI, I renamed it to move error. So I'm going to say dot move error. And then I'm going to be changing the visible property and setting it equal to true. So by default, you want to set that equal to false. So whenever you start the game, just make sure visible is unselected. I'm going to display this message for one second by saying wait and then putting a one inside the parentheses. And then I want to make it invisible again by changing this to false. Later on, we're going to be adding our rotation and also a way to cancel the move. But for now, let's go ahead and work on the script that should be inside the movable folder. There's going to be a couple lines on this script that are also the same from the local script. So let's just go ahead and copy and paste those. So I'm going to be taking these three right here. And I'm also going to be taking this top line right here. And there we go. So that just saved us a little bit of work. To move our parts, we're going to be using a tween. So let's go ahead and start by defining the tween service. We're going to say local tween service. And that's going to be equal to game colon get service. And then here we're going to put tween service. Next, we're going to define the properties of it. So we'll say local tween info. And that's going to be equal to tween info dot new. The first part of this is going to be the time it takes to complete. So I'm going to set that to two seconds. Next will be the easing style. So we're going to say enum dot easing style. And then we're going to say dot linear. After that will be the easing direction. So it's almost the same. So enum dot easing direction. And I'm going to set that to out. Next will be the repeat count, so that's going to be zero. After that is whether it's going to reverse or not, so that's going to be false. And finally, for delay time, we're going to put zero. I have another video that just talks about tween service, so if you're interested in that, I'm going to put that down in the description. After the tween service part, we're going to be using a for loop to add click detectors to all the parts inside this folder. So let's go ahead and say for underscore comma. Then we're going to say part in pairs. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put folder, colon, get children. What we want to do for all the parts inside that folder is add a click detector. So just to make sure we're working with a part, we're going to say if part, 
colon is a. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put base part. Then we're going to make a click detector. So let's say local click is equal to instance dot new. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put click detector. And then to put that inside the part, we're just going to say click dot parent is equal to part. And finally, we're going to define what happens whenever we get that move event from the local script. So let's go and say move event dot on server event. We're going to say colon connect and then function. Next to function, we're going to take in the player. So this is the player that triggered the remote event. We're also going to get the part. So that's our selected part. And finally, we're going to take in the mouse position. Go ahead and move the mouse cursor in between the last two parentheses and press enter. The first thing we're going to do is say local new underscore position. And that's going to be equal to mouse position for now. And then we're going to be using our tween to move that part. So we're going to say local tween. And that's going to be equal to tween service colon create. Inside here will be the object we're tweening. And then we're going to pass the tween info. So make sure this part right here matches this part right here. So we're lowercase t and uppercase i. And the last part is going to be the property that we're changing. So we're going to use curly brackets. We're going to be changing the position. And we're going to be setting that equal to new underscore position. After we create it, we're going to play it by saying tween colon and play. We're going to need to adjust this a little bit, but let me go ahead and show you what's happening now so you can understand why we need to fix it. Now that we're in the game, let's go and start by testing selection and making sure that makes it a little bit transparent. Okay, so that part looks good. And then I want to move this part onto the wall by clicking. Okay, so that works pretty good for going up in the air. But watch what happens when I try to move this piece here. Let me go ahead and start by selecting the piece. And then I want to move it somewhere on this ground over here. And you can see this part moves under the ground. So that's the part of the script that we need to fix. To do that, I'm going to start by deleting this part right here. So we're going to start with an empty variable. And then what we're going to do is say if mouse position dot y, so the up and down direction, if that is less than part dot size dot y divided by 2, you can see that half the part went under the ground. So that's why I'm checking half of the size. So if that's true, then what I want to do is set new position equal to a new vector. So vector 3 dot new. Inside here, I'm going to take the mouse's x position, so mouse position dot x. The problem part is the y, so I want to set that equal to part dot size dot y divided by 2. The z part is also OK, so I'm going to say mouse position dot z. And just to try to explain this a little bit more, so right now I'm taking a look at this part right here and the properties of it. You can see the position is about 11.5. And then if I look at the size, it's 23. So that 11.5 is half of the size. So I want to make sure that the position never goes below that part right here. So if I do click on the bottom, the Y position of the mouse is going to be 0. So that 0 is going to be less than half the size of my part. So in that case, I'm just going to move it back to half the size, which is that 11.5. If that doesn't make sense, that's fine. What we're doing is just preventing that part from going underneath the ground. OK, so back on the script, we're going to make an else statement. In this else statement, if this is not the case, then what we're going to do is just say new position is equal to mouse position. All right, so let's go ahead and test it again and see if that fixed our issue. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select this wall here and then choose a position on the ground. So maybe like right here. And you can see the part no longer goes inside the ground. It stays on the surface. Let's go ahead and also test our distance control. So I went ahead and selected this part here. And let's move a little bit away. And I'll try to move this part right here. You can see it's too far away, so that little GUI popped up, and I can try another position. So that was within my 50 studs, so that worked out fine. All right, so now we know the main part of the script is working, so now we can add the extras like rotation and also a cancel. To do that, we're going to head back to the local script. Down here, inside the input began function, we're going to be adding a cancel. So we're going to be using the right click on the mouse to cancel our selection and not move it. To do that, I'm going to drop down a few lines. So this should be in the same vertical position as this if right here. For this one, I'm going to say if input dot user input type. And I'm going to check to see if that's equal to enum 
dot user input type dot mouse button two. So that's going to be a right click. If that's true, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say selected dot transparency is equal to zero. And then I'm going to clear out the selected piece by saying selected is equal to nil. For the rotation, I'm going to use the letter R on the keyboard. So let me go ahead and just copy this line right here. And then this part, we're going to change this from mouse button two to keyboard. Okay, so if we have some input from the keyboard, we want to check to make sure it's the letter R. So we'll say if input dot key code, and that's equal to enum dot key code dot R. So this is where you can change the letter that you want to use. If it's equal to the letter R, then what I'm going to do is say rotate event colon fire server. And this time, the only thing I'm going to do is pass the selected piece. All right, so that's good here. So let's head back to the other script. So down below our mouse event function, we're going to make another one. We're going to say rotate event dot on server event. We're going to say colon connect and then function. Inside the parentheses, we're going to take the player that triggered the remote event and also the part that was selected. And here, what we're going to do is say part dot orientation. And that's going to be equal to part.orientation. And then we're going to add a vector to this. So we'll say vector 3.new. Inside here, I'm going to put 0 for the x rotation, 45 for the y rotation, and then 0 for the z rotation. If you want to, you can adjust this number right here. And that'll control how much rotation you get every time you press the letter R. So if you want it to be only 90 degree turns, then you can change that 45 to a 90. All right, and that's all we have to do for this script. So let's go ahead and test everything together. Let's go ahead and test the cancel first so I can select a piece. And then if I use the right click, I can cancel it. And then for rotation, after you select the piece, you can press the letter R to rotate it around. So I feel like there's quite a bit of uses for this script. You can use it to make a chess game where you select the chess pieces and then select where you want it to go. You can also make a little area where you can build a staircase. Let me know how you might use this down in the comments, and if there's any other variations of this that you want to see, go ahead and let me know. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video, and stay tuned for the next one.